Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Wildermyth. The last time we left off, we had a pretty scary story battle, that's why we're pretty beat up here. Um, I actually did see something interesting right before I started this uh, recording. Um, <clears throat> one of the people that specifically works at the uh, development studio, it might be like the head developer, or like the you know person that created the studio or whatever, that works on Wildermyth, actually said that, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty much done with Wildermyth, aside from like bug fixes. And things like that. They said that mostly what they wanted to do was ship Omen Road, and they've been working on the game for a very, very long time at this point. So they're effectively going into like a hibernation state, and they'll probably do something else down the line, but they kind of just want to take a break. Which I feel like for developers, that's, you know, I mean, they, they're being able to do that is very, very nice, I think. Being able to just be like, okay, I've done all I want to do with this game. We'll move on to another project at some point, but there's no rush, basically. Definitely a lot better outcome than what unfortunately happens to a lot of developers these days, so. Good for them. I'm happy they, uh, they're they happy with uh, what they've created here. It's definitely a very fantastic experience, so. All right, uh, what am I going for? With that out of the way. I would like the fancy chests. A high-level artifact weapon, but we'd have to fight the Gorgons. What do they have? Ooh. Yeah, the Gorgons are a little scary. I think, especially since I'm kind of hurt, I think I'm gonna go for the easy deepest and draw them and then heal at the campfire. I think that's just the better call. I absolutely think that's just the better call. But yeah, I'm happy the developer kind of gets to move on now. They created this, they wanted to do this. They actually said Omen Road did do very well too, because they said, you know, like this announcement wasn't in like reaction to how well Omen Road did or anything like that. They said it did very well actually, which is fantastic to hear, but it's more so just like, yeah, you know, we've, we've created what we, want, what we wanted to create, so we're good. All right. <clears throat> Seems like Vara's gonna be the one to learn the skill here. Um, just because I needed to get over here, basically, so. Thornfang. Fund an action point after a melee kill. To a ranged attack against her, any adjacent allies counterattacks with a ranged attack of her own. Hmm. That is cool, and I've never. I haven't used it before. Ideally, I don't want Vara getting attacked at all, though. More jump jaws would be nice, but you know, we've never used archery. We'll give it a shot. There we go. And I think that's the final enemy. It is not. Alright. That was the final one. It was a shield friend hiding over here. Okay. We are certainly getting there. Uh, chastised. Caller. Oh, I hated the groundskeeper. The groundskeeper was awful, but the Morthagi barely have, like, anything going for them. So, yeah, I feel like it's got to be the Woken or... Mm. Slingers with extra health would be very annoying. Because they're just so common and they can just summon more of each other. I think I want to kill the Slinger. Or kill the slinger. Get rid of the slinger's 30% extra health. Because the chastised isn't terrible. Yeah, let's get rid of that. They're just more common than the other ones. Which makes them way more annoying. Uh, alright. Now to the Draven, Where we can upgrade one of our things. Got a little bit of healing. Obviously need a lot more. We got Gore Lords. We got a Red Cloak. I forget exactly what the Red Cloaks do. Um... But this is going to be a difficult fight, I think. <clears throat> um, I think we probably want to go ahead and start with a swell song, yeah. Lore Dump is... Eh. Lore Dump is fine. I really wish I had a barrage here. There's the red cloak. Oh my god, it has so much XP. Or HP. Fireball? Prepares to release a giant fireball. 
Generates 25% of total health. Move away from the attacker after being attacked once per turn. Yeah, I mean, both of those things are annoying. Um, I really wish I could hit, like, multiples of any enemy with this. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like it'll work. I can kill a dart, but... I feel like if that's the case... I would rather just lore dump this Raid Knight so it can't... Unless it blocks it. Oh my god. God, I get so unlucky with that. Um, let's see, we do have you. Okay, there's a haunt back there. And we do have you. So, if I splinter salvo... How many can I hit? I can hit these two. Which is not terrible, and at least has a 100% chance to hit. Okay, so Raid Knights... Significantly less dangerous now. They're kind of boxed in, so they can't actually get to me. The Devine can, but not the other ones. So... I'm gonna go into these roots. And then... Can kill one of them. Or attack the Raid Knight. Like, what can the Raid Knight even do while it's mounted? Charge? Okay, the Raid Knight's pretty annoying. Honestly, though, I think if I move Vara... Like, right here... Yeah, we can kill both. Unless the dart blocks. God, I hate that. Die, you stupid prick. God. How dare you live. Um, so the Raid Knight's still alive. <laughs> I'm getting so unlucky with these. Oh my god, I'm getting severely unlucky with these. Um... Yeah, I'm just gonna move you back here, Hughes. You're kinda hurting. <clears throat> I can't believe how unlucky I got on some of those. <clears throat> Wait, that still hit? Oh, you threw the... You threw the one thing at me, that's annoying. This is not good. This is not good. I hate everything about this. And you dodged my counterattack, because of course you did. You're dodging everything else, why not my... Why not my one good thing that's happening? Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. Hmm, this is not good. Uh, this dart is the one doing this. Yeah. Please just die. Thank you. Okay, so that's gone, so I can at least move out of the fireball range. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I mean, god, there's... Not a lot to go off of here. Okay, well, I'm gonna need you to, uh... You are in the fireball range, so I do need to get you out of there. There's the gore lord. Um... Yeah, honestly, killing, like, any of these things would be phenomenal, so if we can kill the stump, I'm down. Thank you. Of course, the Devine dodged. Everything here is dodging or blocking. Why not that? Uh... Three true damage to anyone that enters my space. So you walk right here. Um, and then I can kill the haunts. Good. Alright, now we just gotta get Hughes out of here and actually have him live. How much more damage would your dagger do? Let's see, Vara's in a really, really bad spot too. <clears throat> Like, uh, Hughes is not in a great spot. Because that fireball is about to wreck us. Six to seven. Seven would kill Hughes. So, that's not acceptable. Um, how much damage does this do? Eight damage? Yeah, it's not going to be enough. I, mean, I can do that. Now you have that going on. You're hobbled, so what's your movement now look like? It does have throw net, though. 
And it can move right there. So, I think if I move Hughes to right here, armor up. I should have switched to your other weapon, though, to get the extra block. Ye Hughes might go down here. <clears throat> this is just a really, really shitty situation. Um, really wish I could get in here to kill the Devine because it's going to be one of the biggest issues. But, I don't think I'm going to be able to. So killing the stump may still be the best call. <clears throat> mm. God, this is a really, really rough situation. Um, I think what I want to do is silk step with Vara so she at least doesn't die. <clears throat> okay. There's the fireball. Okay, you're channeling another one. That one's in not that nearly as worse a spot. Gordon Vines, good. Okay, the Raid Knight is gonna shoot Kalem, but Kalem dodged. Okay, I think we're good. I think we've successfully recovered now. We might still have someone go down, but this is a significantly better situation than we were in before. So... Um... Yeah, I mean, hitting... You... Would be great. Let's kill both of them. Thank you. Or not kill them, but... <coughs> do some damage, rather. So... Now... You are inside... Mm, yeah, you have a few options. I could pin this. Okay. Um, I'll get you into that for the Calcify. And then I will move you back here. And we will Wild Grasp the Devine. Good. Now... You... Three damage to you for free. Um, I can almost kill the Gore Lord. So what happens if I do this? I don't think I can do enough damage. Nope, I can kill now. Um, yep, we're gonna kill the Gore Lord. <coughs> okay, don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, I can strike you and still move. Which would be phenomenal. And we have an untouchable now. So, get out of there. Alright, and then Vara, you just killed the Devine. Okay, okay, I think we've recovered. Sorry, I, I wanted to show this fight because this one was actually very scary. Like, mostly the ones I want to cut out are the ones that proved to be, like, no problem at all. But there are some of them that... There are some of them that are a little bit scarier. I really didn't think you would be able to reach me, but yeah, you did still have your fireball. <sighs> minus one potency, minus one health, this campaign. Her jump jaws scale off of potency, so that really sucks. But... Vara slinks off into the shadows to lick her wounds, will come find you. Her teeth feel a little duller from that day forth. Damn it. That is super annoying. What does Deafened do? Uh, minus two bonus damage and potency. Ew. That's annoying. I haven't really had to deal with terror birds that much. <clears throat> but, yeah, you're annoying. I'm gonna hit you. And you. Yeah, Vara just barely died there. If I hadn't revealed her, if I had kept her stealthed, she would have lived, but then the Devine would have lived, and it might have been able to walk up and shoot Hughes. So I was like, there, there was a lot of stuff I was thinking about. Okay, I did manage to hit you there. Okay, I mean, it's fine. 
The loss of potency does suck, but at least the only thing that it actually affects is your jump jaws, which I don't really rely on for damage anyway, because they don't do that much damage. So... Okay. They're mostly just for the pin. Let's get into this rock. Discus. Splinter Blast. Maybe Splinter Blasting you would be a better call. Get rid of some of that armor. Alright, it runs away. I need more stuff to get in. I never did reach the forge thing or whatever, but we, we have we have other things going on. Eyelash. Mm. If only I could give LTR the free bow attack. There we go. You're staying right here. Uh, I'll fire leash that to right there. Just so it's closer to the actual enemy I'm trying to hit. Yeah, red cloaks are annoying. Like, not the worst thing, but still annoying. Um, I'm moving like... Is there really nothing else up there? Let's have you shoot it. Oh, I should have moved you though. But it's just LTR. So it's fine. God, you're so annoying with your running. Stop! You keep getting away from the fire because of that. You stupid coward. Okay, well... I don't think Hughes could kill it, or I would have it run up, or I would have you run up. Ellen's for... Let's do some of this. Come here, you little shit. So tired of you. Get over here. And now fire lash the stupid thing. Yeah. That's a lot of XP for you. But, I mean, it is a red cloak. They give you a lot. Okay, so that's unfortunate what happened with Vara, but... Uh, the wardrobe. No, Red Cloaks do not need 30% extra health. Screw you. I'm I'm sad that the Shadow Hunters are getting added to Deepest, but no, that other one is absurd. We're not we're not doing that. Oh hey, is this the end? Is it just three pages? I guess that makes sense. Everything as far as roguelikes are concerned usually kind of follow the Slay the Spire method of having like three acts, basically. So that might be the end. We might escape once we get there. <sighs> Heal. A slow return to wonder. Probably hard watching them go. Maybe it's a bad time for me to say this, but honestly, I'm pretty disappointed. And I'm sure you are too, huh? Sorry, you have to play the big brother. But maybe we just follow them, if we both do want to. Sometimes I don't feel as young as I am, I mean... I'm older now, but I'm not far past 40. Strong enough that I shouldn't have been left behind. So many of our days are decided by hesitation. Our weak moments. There were those I might have loved. There were many things I might have done. I might have gone with them to the end. Regrets, Hughes? Guess it's too late to deny. Deny it. Why? I got a cure? Oh, I did possess such a thing. If I... Oh, if I did possess such a thing. If I did... What need would I have for this hooded costume, this wry little smile? <laughs> but, I would say... Imagine yourself alone in this place again, without me. Without anyone else, forced and free to guide yourself. If you harbor regrets, then, if you desire more deeply to change the past than the future, where do you think you will wander off to? There is no going back. That'd be lost, huh? And that's... I mean, it's kind of a lesson, it's kind of a metaphor. I should treat my life as if I'm leading it. Actually leading it through a place like this. Hmm. Sounds like you've got some experience. With regret? Well... Wisdom is the snow-blooming snow flower of life's winters. Gloom and glen funnel their feet. Down to a wooded gorge to a quiet place. A rooted place. Wet and alive and pure. Clear brook descends the stones to coil in a pool. 
Good to take a rest here, I think, even for just a bit. If I am choosing, I can think of no better setting. Let me tell you now the story of my death. The brook water is clean and sweet. For a time, LTR holds silent, readying words. When she opens her mouth again, her voice is sonorous, low. Warmer and closer and more artless than it has sounded to this point. I spoke before, about my home. I hate remembering home. It was high on a range, built there by some bizarre predecessor of mine, someone who loved the sun but not their neighbors under it. A hard hike below us, over hills, there was the town. And we went there sometimes, but even before the fire, I was a lonely girl. When you say we, it's family? Is that not obvious? Hmm, myself, my mother, my father. I think they wanted another child, which strikes me as strange. Suddenly. Just that someone exists still who remembers what those two simple people once hoped for. Anyway, yes, we were a family. They were at market together that day, my mother and father. I was about to, is that rum war? I was about to say... Is that rum war? That kind of looks like rum war, but it could just be the same face. And I was in the woods, not far off, mapping small worlds in the mud. The details are dim, I remember standing up from my squat, because I smelled smoke. And I turned and saw the fire, a wolfish thing when I think of it, chasing me, leaping limb and stone. Oh my god, wait, that reminds me, I gotta get this thought out before, um, before I forget. Someone mentioned, Millie Grand was the one that we, like, put into the Morthogi, like, supercomputer to, to control the Morthogi. That was Millie. Millie was the excited fangirl that joined us because she was, like, so excited about our crew, and then she joined, and then she sacrificed herself so that we could control some of the Murthagi. That was Millie. I knew it was important. So the character we saw last time was Millie Grand, the one we put into the Murthagi thing. The character that we had the, uh, armory with and everything. Snarling heat at my heels. Healthy are. I am alright. Memories are broken into flame shapes, buildings burning, trees, my own clothes. They're screaming and my mother's collar is over her mouth. My recollection, I just wake up under our dark oak beam roof. My mother is stiff and still. My father, a cool hand, leaves my forehead. He has lived long enough to see me open my eyes. Soon his will shut. My legs are all gnawed by fire. I am weak. I am unable to bury them myself, so... The two of them will sleep in their bed untouched for three years and forever. You mean you lived with the dead? Hmm. Don't be angry with me. No, I just... That's rough. That's rough. I can see why you hate it. That place. Well. Or... Better to say I think I hate many things about that place. Yes, and the time I spent clinging to it. I would wake before dawn and not come back before dusk, just so I would not have to see them. Even so, that house gave me what I needed, shelter. And up on the ridge, I felt close to the stars. The stars I loved and admired. They had so many siblings, I wanted to live among them. And when they sent their own sister to me, I recognized her immediately. Yeah, we have a meteor that fell. Oh my god, no, it's the rock! Oh my god, wait! Elthiar! Elthiar is the character that found the little rock friend egg that we found. That was in the- Elthiar was the one that gave us the whole- the whole thing! About the-, the oh my god, that's crazy. That's crazy. Cause yeah, they, cause they talked about sisters. They, they- they wanted a sister and then they got this sister and- from the stars. And then I went there with- who, who was it we went with? I know it was my friend with the pompadour. And then another character, but I can't remember her name. But they went there, and then I gave- I gave the baby rock golem friend to... Uh, the one with the pompadour. Oh my god, that's crazy. Little Ogoden. I knew she had fallen there for me. I forgot that was even the name. Yeah. Ogogen. Hada has a way of sending what we need, Hada. Your god? Could be him. I still think it could be. This fallen star then became your companion. 
Yes, yes, in any case. In any case, I had her then, little Ogojin, out of darkness. We grew up, two gluttons for wind and wander. We were never separated, we went on adventures together as true sisters ought, blundering from triumph to humiliation, learning lessons all the while. Yeah, this is super the art for the character that was included in this story too. I straight up have your little friend! I think most children suspect that they will someday be exceptional. In any case, it only happened to be true. I had a gift, you see, the same way you do, Ellen's for and Calum. But mine was greater. Mine was indeed great. And by my 20th year, I was famous. My talents unmatched as far as anyone could see or say. Magic was natural as numbers to me. I thrived, I discovered, and taught all these beautiful mathematics, and was rewarded with glory and fine brocades. Ah. Uh. Hey, you smell like blood again. Gru gru. No more almonds, unfortunately. He's becoming a problem, bird. Did, 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 did the owl just scratch you? Or, like, dig its talons into your arm or something? Hmm? Oh, he... It is alright. Hmm. I think when you recoiled at the hand of sunlight in the cave... It was these memories that made you hesitate, wasn't it? You worried the feeling of the sun, the cool air would hurt you. I believe I did say something to that effect, or do I misremember? Guess it just connected for me, though. Hmm. LDR, I don't want you to suffer telling the story. Oh? Very well, I shall refrain from suffering. That will be my favor to you, hmm? I wish that I could, would be someone like you, LDR, even in my frivolous days. I hoped I might some uh, become someone like my cousin or the sorceress. And I invoke them, not lightly. And I just always had this fantasy I would be something great, and even Captain Onya would show me her admiring eyes. I think they would admire you now, Caleb. Me, I am much more than the simple and flattering fraction I have so far shared. Anyway, we are coming to the piece of this tale I first teased, of the goddess and me, of Oroe and me. Oroe, you should understand, is a very old thing. She is older than all you call a god. Older, the dragon has said, than the egg. Older than pre-speech. Which means all those emergent concepts that could form before language was made. In the early, long moments of existence, she was one fiber of purpose in the wiry tangle of unmattering. When shapes were had, hers was one of the first. Like most ancient beings, she lived full of wonder, and like most of us, age uncounted, wonder led her to dream. Out of her dreaming came this place, Nithar Farowen. I don't know why, it belonged to her in some sense, and in another sense did not. When a dragon, weary of its world and whiningly bored, dug down to the deep below to Nithirfarowen, immediately then, Oroe was deposed. So the twilight dragon began to rule here, and has since ever, ever since. Wait, so she just stopped ruling and Glyphric started? That's all? Like a... just like a schoolmaster going quietly into retirement? Abdicating? Maybe? Anyway, she's saying that's all we need to... we need to know of it. Well, really, that is all anyone knows, besides them. Her abdication, yes, is a funny picture. Glyphrix plopping down from the ceiling onto her throne, or away dancing merrily away into the wilderness. The humor there is mostly in the color of your verbs. But for my part, I trust what I have witnessed in my years. Whoop! I didn't mean to click. I know you see a loveless sky, and you find only fickle footing. You hold your palm up to an untraceable horizon. But another flare, for all that it might seem chaotic, is in balance. So I think she is well satisfied with its state. And oh, if Oroe wished, this world would roil. It would stagger our minds, oppress our bodies, it would usurp our wills, it would seat her own desiring in our chests. Instead, her world holds us. It holds the ones who wander. Ones who are strayed, who have been or become alien to their own kind. Glyphrix, even, is one of these. Elthiar, you... I think you would never leave, would you? Why would she have that power, Oroe? She was never going to use it. I guess, what does she get out of seeding control? Does she not want control? Well, I do think that Glyphrix was meant to rule here. By her, or else, by some other wild force, perhaps destiny. Meet my eyes, you will see no mischief. I mean this. Dragon calls every crown destiny. Let us say that nature is the better word, then. By nature, dragons are the most profound wanters there are. Nether Flare, where desire governs every step, is almost perfectly suited for a dragonly master. Then also mention... They are not just great wanters, they are volcanic liars. 
Almost helpless in their spew, thieving, cheating, not solely to their enemies, but to their friends and allies. Oh yes. So I would posit that the elemental law of oaths, which is written into the physics of this world, the dragon may dislike it, may dislike it, but it, ultima it has ultimately served us. Clifrix has no need for prudence in their promises. I agree that things would be much worse. Not just for us and all the little things, but for Glyphrix too. That is another reason this particular throne is a good fit. Not destiny, then, but nature. Nature discovering its own order, things finding their proper place. As they did in the dawn of the world. Hmm. Still haven't connected these stories. There was you who went from a sad beginning to something like glory. There's Oroway who ruled until she didn't. What's th What's the... We are close, I am sorry. So Oroe, Oroe, what is important to know about Oroe is that she is not completely present, but neither is she gone. Oroe, th though she no longer owns the fields and skies of Nithar Farwin, still keeps her piece of it. A forest. A forest in which to reside, and she houses ghosts there. These ghosts are an uncommon kind, those whom, for whom mortal life holds no more promise, and immortal rest no peace. It's like a purgatory? Those whom mortal uh, life holds no more promise and immortal rest no peace. Yeah, it's like a purgatory. By some function of divinity or reality, and for reasons they that may or may not even be her own, her wood is twinned in other worlds. It serves as a place of crossing. Okay, this I know we've seen. Yeah, and that makes sense. Oroway, therefore, is often called a god of borders, of life and death, governing a shadow realm. In the early ages when I lived, we already had this myth. Goddess Grey, O oh Goddess Green, may an old stone awaken here? To me, a girl with hungry dreams, it was all a great enticement. A resource, a well, I wish to dip my pail in and drink my fill, wash my feet and trouble free again. I will not yet know my name, but I know yours. Oroe, has a pretty sound. I have heard that you will not refuse a solemn oath, so here's mine. I am someone with no mother. I have power and many admire me, but I am alone. I would stay with you, Goddess Oroe. You would make me your daughter. Be mother to me, take me to your realm, and I will stay there with you. That is my vow. I thought myself quite clever. Didn't intend to keep your oath, did you? In a sense, well... You must have had some brilliant scheme, right? You intentionally... To get out of it, you avoided stating the length of your stay. Was that it? Indeed, such was my thought. Sounds like, well, a decent plan. I can see it working. Yes, by human laws and logic it might. I think words have significance and sonic character, but words are not language. More than the particular meaning or music of its words, language is about understanding. Her, not, her understanding of the promise I had communicated is what I would be bound to, not the words I chose. I did not know that at first. That is interesting, yeah. It's more so based off of the impression she got, that's the promise that you're bound to, rather than just the specific words so you can't, like... Do some special stuff to get around it. It's not very fair. I was speaking in bad faith. You should have made the rules clear then. Ah, oh, my good Lord Ellensforth. Thank you. If only you had been there to take my side. Alas. <laughs> yeah. Ellensforth would be like, that's not fair. And her being like, let me finish the story. Also, hush. But in truth, there was never any recourse. Not once the goddess named me. Ellen's Fury is very pushy and, like, obsessive with you. She named you Elothiar? Orifel. Orifel, well, that'd be quite a lovely name too, right, Ellen Sphore? What? Oh, yeah. It is the kind of name you might give to your daughter. And with those sacred syllables, she fulfilled her obligation and sealed my oath. I was loosed then, entitled to roam in her woods. I remember the kinder, quieter part of me realized and rude the depths of my daring. And yet I did not doubt I would duck any great consequences. Anyway, I will not linger long. So this is why the, the voice was specifically calling you Orifel instead of Elthiar. I just need to speak with... Oh, with you. Somehow I knew her at a glance. Me? Why? What is me to you? Say Ewan. 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 The first sage. Three Ethics was the book I read. It was part of my education. Ewan, the first sage. Speaker's, speaker with stars. Scrivener to Autumn's dragon. Grumpy old Ewan had secrets I desperately wanted. That is all. Then I suppose we may talk. 
See, I'd claim to be an orphan, but I did not really think of myself that way. You worried about being found, even here? What hounds you? Descendants, oh descendants, they bend my ear, they rack my wisdom. They want me to tell them what to do, my descendants. Hmm. In visions they summon me, these poor children, children of generations I never dreamed would come. To them I am an ancestor. Please, if you love your ancestors, give them peace, solve your own problems. I had been adopted by the knight. I have these calculations. What else can it mean when knight's daughter is sent from Black Heights to be your sister? Believed it, or I had wanted to believe it since I was small and lonely. Oh? They don't completely close. My ambition was to realize that connection, manifest it true, to bind my life half or all into a star. A wild ambition. Ewan could help, because she was this speaker with... Speaker with the stars, famously. Even there was starlight in her hair. Healthy R. Or felt. Yeah, you're, you're still on the name thing? You were also someone profound in your desiring, weren't you? I was full of wonder then. That girl was full of wonder. She was full of wonder and courage and hope. Learning all she could, thinking brilliance would ward her from the worst that might come. You know. I sometimes feel as if life just amounts to great lengths of light, diffuse across time and darkness. And the ghost of every being is a glowing river of moments. In this way, we would already be alike to sun and moons, the roving planets. But I know you did not risk all of this for this type of answer, so I will tell you what I see in this very beautiful book. I can tell that all your figuring is impressive. Oh, it is far more tree-like, more advanced than mine ever grew. I do not fully grasp it. But you are indecisive about your own place in the equation. Weather, time, terrain, variables of circumstance dominate your formula. And it is your value as the woman wanting, as the one with the animating wish that you, as yet, have unconsidered. Underconsidered. Or so it seems to me. Ewan's counsel was spare, but sufficient. So you've been trying to like, you're basically having like an existential crisis or not really knowing where you fit in or in life and are wanting like some sort of purpose to it. And you've come to the point where you've like put out this entire equation to represent that. And then, yeah, you're not actually thinking about what you want, basically. You're more so just thinking about it in like numbers from a very like logical kind of way. Some of this is, is difficult for me to parse because there's a lot going on, but... So I left. You just left? I thanked her and conjured myself back to my little room in the good green world. Would you have used some sort of... Sorry, I suppose I'm wondering how. What made that possible? My sister. My sister was my anchor. By the thinnest, subtlest tether I could craft, I had left us interwound. Tugging on that tether, I pulled myself out of the woods and across three rivers, back to my bed and book stacks. How long did you have? Before she chased me down? Hmm. Not long at all. Time and thought, my dear. Life, death, magic, and the wind. They move in loops. All of creation in orbits and rotations, a tea singer once told me. All is constantly a dance. So perhaps the mage herself... Thwomp, thwomp. Hop, my little friend! Not the kind of company you want to have inside. Spurned gods or angry moms. Indeed. I made every effort to flee, spent every trick and trump, sought every favor I'd accumulated in my small life. In the end, I laid them to sleep on a lake. My life's work and my sister. May they rest safe until they are found by curious and capable hands, which they were found. I turned. To fight. And lost. In a way, yes. In a way, no. I turned to fight, but there was no fight. A god, I think, is just something else. There was no struggle, no victory, no spell of blood, no defeat, just... There was reality. A tide. I was one jewel of kelp pulled to sea, painlessly. You might say I woke from one sleep to another. Little kelp jewel. And you call it the story of your death. What else can I say? What else is it called? My hair has gone to jet, my skin has changed, I am ageless, I stalk around in a country of ghosts. But still... In my eyes, which were brown and talkative, there are these voiceless moons. They only glare and glow. I am a lostling, a dead thing, a dread thing, a... Shut up, no. Elthiar, Orphel, I really don't know what lines I can safely cross. Mostly I don't want to make you answer for my own silliness, but... And it comes hard to help when I poke at you so. It does, and it feels... Is it already too late? He really died. Hmm? What? I know it's different, I just... 
If you really did die, then you were almost like us, Caleb and me. Well, perhaps. Perhaps, yes, I suppose we are similar in a way. Like you two, I found myself conscious again. Walking again, worried again, before I knew what I came to know. Though it has been long since I worried now. What I'm maybe not getting is she chases you down, snatches you up, but... It's kind of messed up. It feels like she cast you out to Rome. I did not return to her forest, no. In fact, we are standing on these damp rocks that all my flimmering, fallible senses would tell me. It was these same rocks and waters under me when I f drew my first warm whiff of nether flare. Not understand it then, and it remains a little opaque. How much of my fate is Oroe's will? Was it wrath that drove her, or was it something more abstruse and beyond mortal knowing? Beyond human knowing, let me amend. I can see myself handling it or being as calm as you are about it. I can't see myself handling it or being as calm as you are about it. I mean, but you've had time. Hmm. Hard to imagine how one's mindset might transform. Took many shifts of spectrum, the slow, sharp twisting through an intersecting humility to see what this could be anything other than a curse. That this could be anything other than a curse. She has cursed me to wander these hideous crags and steps, forever losing my way, forever scouring, weeping, and enraged. What turned you from that belief? Humility, she said. Yes, humility. Is it so hard to imagine? Perhaps I really owe only mean despair. When I was too tired and hopeless, I would wind up returning here, returning and returning to this one place of solace, this sweet-tasting musical water that one day sounded so shrill and odious to me. Kill me knuckle from knuckle, shoulder from neck, owl head, or away. Kill me piece by piece painfully, I don't care, but kill me, please. Yeah, I mean... We touched on the fact that your existence is horrible. Like, you are just trapped here, you live forever. I, I do wonder if you could die in combat? I guess not really, because you always just flee from combat if you die in combat for us, so maybe you can't, like, die that way either. Maybe that form of death is impossible for you as well. So you really are just stuck here, constantly suffering. You lied to a god, and they chose to make you suffer by just putting you in a place where you're constantly wandering, can never find where you are, have no one, and just exist endlessly. Like, you're straight up begging to be killed, this is so horrible. Please, please, oh goddess. Goddess, I wronged, please. My sin was so great and hurtful to you, I'm sorry. The moment came, I saw myself clearly. My fingers nudged loose a stone in the wall of outrage and self-sympathy I had built around my soul, and I peered in at myself. I'm so sorry. Your daughter did not care for the courage of her mothers. For the willingness of her mothers, she gave little care. For you, who sacrificed your bodies for me. You, who mended my smile, dear knight. Even you, who held me to my word, goddess. I admit that all I asked for, you did your best to provide. Yeah, you're like, thanking your three different mothers. The night sky that gave you a sister, this one that did this for you, and then your actual parents. Helps to say the truth aloud at times, to hear if it really sounds like the truth. Feel certainty and grew certain of other things then. Suddenly, these things that before they were tumbling around in my head, I settled those questions in me decisively and surely. I left hope behind and wonder and worry. And that is more or less how I became Elthiar, a creature who guides others on strange journeys through the dark. Told me it didn't matter where I started. Everything about you is shaped by who you once were. Yes. Laura, seriously? That is only my shape, my form, my finger, my name, a wrinkle of my mind does not decide what I decide. Well, I am quite relieved. Truth be told, I was concerned we would learn something terrible about her and be forced to cast her off or treat her with disgust. It would ruin things, but I was scared for nothing. You were afraid of what? Not afraid, just... just I want to like her. Yara Orfell, you have a reason, don't you? For sharing all this? I think you would have a reason. I'm glad to listen, I am, but what does our knowing help? Hmm, well, it helps you know who I really am. But yes, also there is a more careful reason. I have already expressed that I am not certain what lies ahead. I am no longer sure before the last few sleeps, and it had been a long time since that was the case. There are things happening here in Nether Farrowind that I have never experienced, so I am made uncertain, and... That slowly has led me to worry, and so I come again to wonder, not yet to hope, but hope can't be far either, can it? What's made it all go different? I mean, do you know? My mother was never so restless before. 
The goddess? The Omri's. Omri's, those are hers. Or they are a part of her, possibly. I suddenly feel that's true. Hmm. Remember the surprise on your face, your alarm, when we first fought ghosts. So these are warning, my warning words. Things are moving in the myth. Oraway and Glyphrix, their natures, the nature of Nithrafarwen, their untouching dance. So that's why you're like so scared and you know, you mentioned like you straight up, you're like, I don't know because you've been living this same song and dance for so long and then we came around and now everything is going differently and you're scared of that. All natures may change and all knowing may be set askew. A fog may descend and cause you fear, and you may have to forge through it alone. Suppose I wanted you, before any great change is upon us, to know. Know who I am and have been. And know what you want. You must, in this world, know what you want. Clear and strong. Her lips shine, abrupt, she turns. Not another word, just the cool pink air she leaves full of water song. Brook damp boulders glisten in the dusty glow of crystal life plant life. Crystal life, plant life. The warm, wet smell is on their eyelids. Hmm. I'm not marching yet, I don't think. I'll just make sure. I'll also just quickly... I'm sure you will. I a little bit wish... He had a weird response earlier. Now the said she fought the god. I guess you just made a face, and I wondered why. Oh. Just... I thought about if Orway is a true thing, and she dipped a hand in Elthiar's life, I think perhaps I may find him as well. Out of Rohana, and maybe I will. That was your god? Yes, I was pious as I aged even and got sadder and shyer about it. I am still something. I wonder if you should meet your god. What if you don't like him? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, don't meet your heroes. I imagine that's especially true for gods. That was a really long one, but had a lot of interesting stuff to give us, especially about LTR and even some stuff about Kalem. So, alrighty. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for some more.